The following is a UPN News 13 special presentation. Live from the Los Angeles Music Center and the Amundsen Theater. It's Kiss of the Spider Woman. Opening night live. Tonight, we'll take you backstage at Front Row Center for an exclusive look at one of Broadway's most memorable hits. It's a powerful and dramatic story of survival and fantasy. Kiss of the Spider Woman, opening night live, is brought to you tonight by The Car You Can Depend On, the 1996 Mitsubishi Galant, by Lucky, the low price leader every day. And by Welch's Juice Makers. There's no other drink that's simpler than that. And now your hosts, Tawny Little and Ron Silver. Good evening and welcome to Kiss of the Spider Woman opening night live. Joining me tonight, respected film actor, Broadway actor, and my good buddy, Ron Silver. <laughs> well, it is an exciting evening, Tawny. Any actor will tell you opening nights are special, whether it's London, Broadway, Los Angeles. On opening night, there's an added tension in the air. Tonight, we'll find out what the stars of this show are thinking as they get backstage, ready, getting ready for the show. We'll be going back there live in just a minute. This is live, obviously. And in the next hour, we'll be showing you exclusive previews from the show. But first, let's go to Wendy Wall. She's on our Star Watch. Wendy, what do you have? Thanks, Tawny and Ron. You know, after four decades in show business, Cheetah Rivera has collected quite a menagerie of friends and fans, both in New York and here in Los Angeles. Tonight, some of the celebrities holding tickets to the opening night show include John Lithgow, Betty White, Mickey Rooney, Steve Allen, and Lonnie Anderson, among others. And I'm going to be here to meet and greet the stars as they arrive for the premiere. Back to you guys. Okay, thanks, Wendy. We'll see you then. One might have thought that Kiss of the Spider Woman is a little bit of an unusual choice for the musical stage. After all, it takes place in a prison cell. But Broadway producer Hal Prince was convinced it would work, and in 1993, he proved it with a show that would go on to win seven Tony Awards. When Kiss of the Spider Woman opened on Broadway, the New York Times called it a shiver of pure theater. Time Magazine called it the season's best musical. It was a smash hit. Pretty impressive reaction for a musical about two men in a South American prison. Oh, what's wrong? Oh, my stomach. Maybe it's your appendix. No, I had mine out. God, it hurts. Those who saw the Academy Award-winning film starring William Hurt and Raul Julia may have wondered how this stark and dramatic story would translate into a Broadway musical. How do you depict prison torture one minute and burst into song the next? That's where I draw the line. Hi. I draw the line. Hi. I draw the line. Hal Prince, the show's producer, the man who brought us Cabaret, Sweeney Todd, and others, says musicals aren't just about song and dance. They can deal with very serious material, i.e. Sweeney Todd, and still uh, provide music and dance and, and, and production, and the audience is more likely to sit for it if it has musical trappings. And you'll look around, you'll look around at that sharp piercing, sharp piercing, sharp piercing, sharp piercing, sharp piercing. Oh! I looked at the movie and I could not imagine how this could be a musical. But having seen it, uh, once, I, when I, once I saw it, I was floored. I mean, it was just, from the beginning, it just grabs you. And it takes you, and it like this, and you're just, you know, until the end. Dorian Harewood plays Valentine, a macho revolutionary forced to share a prison cell with a gay window dresser, played by Canadian actor Juan Chiron. He's put in the cell with this guy who's totally different from him, and he doesn't like him. He doesn't want to know about him. He just wants to be left alone. His effeminate cellmate, Molina, escapes the horrors of prison by remembering old movies. He invokes the spirit of this great movie star that he remembers from, from his childhood to help him through the, the difficulties of, uh, of, of his surroundings. She's glamorous. 
She brings him joy. She brings him strength. She uh, brings him humor. Uh, and um, he's allowed to survive. As Valentin's torture intensifies, he begins to listen to his cellmate's stories of the glamorous Aurora, and a surprising friendship develops. There is, is essentially a love story. I mean, they do fall in love in the truest sense of the word, in the deepest, most human. This is a meeting of souls. Believe it or not, Kiss of the Spider Woman is a show that really provides lots of opportunity for song and dance. And right at the center of it all is the remarkable Cheetah Revere. In New York, she's as revered as any Broadway star can be, believe me. And nearly everyone has something to say about her, something nice to say there about her. There are a few other great stars, musical theater stars left, but most of them are gone. Cheetah Rivera is the epitome of musical theater. There has never and never will be another Cheetah Rivera. There's something electric about her. And I look up at the marquee, and I still sometimes, it's hard to believe that my name was like over the Schubert theater. Huge. A true Broadway legend, Cheetah Rivera has exploded across the stage for over 40 years. Her road to stardom began when this 17-year-old ballerina auditioned for the chorus in Call Me Madam. A string of shows followed, including Can Can and Mr. Wonderful with Sammy Davis Jr. But it was her electric 1957 performance in West Side Story that made her the toast of Broadway. Cheetah and I started in 19... 57 on West Side Story. She had worked on a couple of musicals before then, but um, that's a long career for a woman who still dances, kicks her feet up over her head. In 1960s Bye Bye Birdie, Cheetah was back on Broadway, co-starring with a relatively unknown TV actor. I was so scared and nervous about it. Uh, she was so gracious to me, and uh, I found out it was easy to make her laugh, so I was she put me at ease right away. And the first thing that I found out about Cheetah was she liked to get downstage of me a little bit so that her back was to the audience so she could go and make faces and try to break me up. <laughs> her performance led to one of the five Tony Award nominations that she would accumulate throughout her career. But it wasn't until 1984 that she finally earned her first Tony, co-starring opposite Liza Minnelli in The Rink. Two years later, her world came to a screeching halt. She was in a terrible automobile accident. She has a number of metal screws in her shin and ankle. She can still kick over her head. She's never lost her energy or her ability to dance. Well, you know, I don't even think about it anymore. There's so much lead in this leg <laughs> that I used to think uh, when I was tired, I could always tell the difference because the leg would lag a bit. In a 1993 comeback that could be ripped from the pages of a Hollywood movie, Cheetah opened Kiss of the Spider Woman on Broadway and captured her second Tony Award. She has such class on the stage. And her, that personality bangs across those footlights like no one else I've ever seen on the stage. She's unbelievable. I mean, she's got more energy than all of us. And, uh, and she makes us keep up with her, basically. I'm not going to be walking slowly anytime soon, <laughs> uh, unless I'm forced to. Uh, I, I will always love to dance. I will always love to laugh. I couldn't stay with her for two seconds. I am not as well preserved as she is. <laughs> I, I can't kick over my head anymore. She is fantastic, and let's go backstage right now, where Cheetah Rivera joins us live from her dressing room. Hi, Cheetah. Hi. Hi, Cheetah. Look who I've got here. Hi, Ron. Hi, Cheetah. Hi. <laughs> You've had such a long career and lots and lots of opening nights. Is it still exciting every time? Uh, um, yeah, if you're allowed to, uh, you know. Well, you're nervous. You're nervous because you really want to be. It's always the first time. I always make a joke and say, it's always this time that they're going to find out. Oh. <laughs> you know what I mean? What do you got to find out this time? What might we find out tonight, oh, that, Cheetah? You know, you, it's been lucky for 97 <laughs> years. It's just yeah. been luck. That's all it is. It's typecasting or something. You no, know, but uh, seriously, it's always exciting. So we got to mix up those feelings of fear with, with excitement and anticipation. There's so many great friends of mine out front. 
And we've been going for such a nice long time. We really, the audiences have been fabulous here. So we just want to tell each night is like a first night. You know, I was here at the show last night. You had a standing ovation at the end. Yes, we had one today too. That's wonderful. <laughs> you know, we saw Dick Van Dyke saying all those lovely things to yeah. you, Cheetah. He's a big fan. Well, he's the best. I mean, he's, I, I keep good company, don't I? I was the luckiest girl in the world. We had the best time. It, <gasps> what? <laughs> You're not nervous. What are you doing? <laughs> You're not nervous, are you? <laughs> oh, look who's here. <laughs> Isn't he gorgeous? I know you've already he broken your leg once, so I won't say break a leg. Oh, no, you don't do that. <laughs> I want to ask you a question. Do you ever fall down on stage? <laughs> <laughs> this is exciting. Oh, my God. So we took one of the most spectacular falls. Do you remember we oh, fell down? Oh, of course I do. And by Barry Brody in the big finale, we came out and swept across <laughs> the stage and went right down to the footlights. Well, we always said that whatever happens with one is going to happen to the other. If you leave Dick, I'm leaving. If you leave Cheetah, I'm leaving. If you fall down, Dick, I'm falling. Is he a good dancer, Brody. Cheetah? He is truly the best. Thank the goodness. Best. Thank she goodness made me you look nice. so good. <laughs> Wrong. Thank goodness you said nice things about one another. <laughs> and this business is, could go either way, as you know. Oh, I, I know, but we pay each other well. <laughs> now, what about this ritual thing? We know that, you know, a lot of actors have rituals before they go on. Dick, you, you know what Cheetah's ritual is fairly well. I don't know if it's changed over the uh, years. Yes, it almost scared me to death. It was opening night, we were standing in the way. She got out such a shriek. You, a high one. I still do it. She, do I, you still, I still do it? I still go ming. <laughs> ming. I was standing right pretty? beside her. <laughs> I do. <laughs> and, then, and then she crosses herself and goes out there and murders And then, and I, and then I just leave it in the hands. <laughs> so, is, it so, I, is it so second nature that you do it every night, or have you ever gone on stage and remembered you forgot to... I can't even do it, but that noise. <laughs> oh, come on, try. No, no I, no, I do it. I do it. I mean, it's actually a way of... Um, finding out what you got <laughs> before you get there. <laughs> it's so good. this is an exciting night, and I can't believe you surprised oh, me. Yeah, I'm glad we to... could surprise you. That's so nice. <laughs> okay, you two, we're going to leave you to your reminiscences right okay. now. Thanks so much. Break uh, a leg, Cheetah. I already no, did. No, no, no. no, no. I don't need that anymore. Not really. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Have a good show. Okay, Have a thanks, great show. That's great. <laughs> Bye. Okay. Bye -bye. Actors are so much fun, aren't they? I thought they? you're supposed oh, to just, say break a leg. You, you are supposed to say, but, but not she that already she really she broke, broke a leg. leg. Look, it's time Don't to get. Break your leg. Now it is time to get a look at what all the buzz is about and see why Cheetah remains one of Broadway's most enduring stars. In this exclusive preview from *The Kiss of the Spider Woman*, Cheetah and her company of dancers perform a song called "Where You Are." <laughs> So build a palace where you're the shah And we'll embrace in a chamber If you run away Some matinee From where you
exciting performance is yet to come. But next, a little inspiration from some real-life goddesses of the silver screen. Dietrich, she could play that male-female thing, which is, I find, always exciting. Plus, how Kiss of the Spider Woman proved to be a real acting challenge. I'm in love with my wife, so I didn't particularly want to kiss a woman, let alone a man. Spider-Woman is a story that's taken many forms. First, it was a novel for Manuel Puig. Then it was a stage play, then a movie. In fact, this is the original movie poster for the film, which starred William Hurt, Raul Julia, and Sonia Braga. For Hurt, it was an Academy Award-winning portrayal, yet some considered it a fairly daring career move. Even today, the show's gay storyline can stir up some controversy and present a real challenge for the actors. Valentina, I've only ever loved two people in my life. My mother and you. In the 1985 movie, William Hurt won an Oscar for a performance that had everyone talking. I thought it was a brilliant film. You know, it totally fit the story. It was great. To be honest, it did kind of, you know, throw me off. It's the 90s, you know? So no big deal. But even in the 90s, the sight of two men being intimate still prompts some strong opinions. It's not something I'd want my kids to see. I'll turn the TV off myself. I don't know about you. <laughs> No big deal. Well, I happen to be gay as well, so it, uh, I think it's a good thing. You can sometimes begin the evening and you can get audible gasps of... <gasps> My only concern when I, when I was looking at it was I didn't particularly want to kiss anyone night after night. I mean, I'm married, I'm in love with my wife, so I didn't particularly want to kiss a woman, let alone a man, for uh, however long, eight shows a week, and, and I'm sure Juan doesn't either, you know. There was a couple, I think it was Detroit, sitting in front of the, uh, the, our sound men, you know, in front of his booth. And all throughout the evening, you know, he kept going to his wife, oh, God, oh, oh, I can't believe you did that, oh, jeez. And at one, at the, at the point where, where the two characters kiss, he literally got up and went, that's it, we're out of here. As far as what I had to go through, I mean, it was just a terrific acting and singing role, and, and a lot of those different levels, and exploring those things, to me, were a lot more attractive than the potential um, uh, repulsion I, I might have had at uh, kissing another man. And For the resistant audiences, really, those are the audiences that we should be playing to. Because it is for those people that they will get not only an entertainment, but they will get an education. And so if I, as Molina, can embrace them and maybe show them that he's OK, uh, then, then I think we've done our job. The role of the gay window dresser was certainly a challenging one for William Hurd in the film and no doubt just as challenging for actor Juan Chiron on the stage. And he's joining us live backstage right now to talk about that. Hi, Juan. Hi. How are you hi, doing? I'm good, thanks. You hi. excited? Why? What's happening? Oh, uh, I don't know. Why are we here? No, no. It's opening night. This is it. it. In LA. Nobody told me. Oh. No, I'm good. <laughs> yes, it's very exciting. I'm just trying to... Uh, just trying to pretend like it's any other night, and uh, I, I can't even talk. I'm so nervous. You know, it must be a little bit different because since you're on a traveling company here and you go from city to city, you have lots of opening nights, but this is L.A. I, is it a different opening night for you? I think so, yeah. It seems to be uh, a little unnerving, uh, knowing that there's going to be a lot of people out there that uh, are, are very, very, you know, well-known and influential, but uh, we're, we're going to try to give people, you know, as good a show as we always do. Yeah, if you do really well tonight, you'll never have to do a play again the rest of your life because you'll be in the movies. Won't that be great? Huh? Won't that be great? From your mouth to God's ears. Is that really what you'd like? Because you, you, you're a trained actor. You've done everything, even opera and Shakespeare and this. I can't imagine you not wanting to be on the boards. Well, it's, it's kind of hard to decide what I want to do, and I think that's probably one of my pitfalls, master of none, jack of all trades. But uh, I, I, I will leave all doors open if anyone is uh, willing to... Uh, knock and uh, and and we'll take it from there it's, it's kind of hard to decide where I'm going to go next but uh, for the time being I'm really enjoying this it's a tough role in lots of ways Ron uh, Juan what have you well <laughs> what well, stop it buddy what have you particularly been wrestling with with this particular role it's very emotional I saw the show last night it looks draining and 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 from a physical point of view too because of all the dancing and whatever well the uh, the emotional arc of, of, the, of the evening is, is, is probably the toughest thing. The fact that you're on a, 
on an emotional roller coaster, you know, from, from the, 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 the heights of, of exaltation to the depths of despair. And, and to do that at the turn, hello, hi, hi. Hello. thank you so much. Okay, Who will say goodnight to one? <laughs> Uh, so uh, it just just trying just trying to bring that uh, it, every evening to the stage with a fresh approach, especially after having done it so many times. Uh, that in itself is probably the biggest challenge. To try to keep it fresh, to try to make it as if it's the first time that I've said these words and the first time that I've actually uh, lived uh, these moments. That in itself, just over the long over the long haul. Well, have am I allowed to say to you though, Juan, break a leg? People got upset when okay. I told Cheetah to break a leg, but That's I can okay. tell you to break a leg. Yes, we, we, we've all had knee surgeries, okay. so you're allowed. Oh, okay. Thank you Thank so you much. much. Have a great Thank show. You. Of course, every actor looks for inspiration to help bring a character to life. In Cheetah Rivera's case, the inspiration was easy. All it took was a look back at the dreamy-eyed, celluloid goddesses of Hollywood's golden years. They were the goddesses of the silver screen. The look. The pose the hair. Indelible images that endure through time, spanning the generations. And if some of the show's design seem strangely familiar, it's no accident. I've used um, Dietrich and Rita Hayworth as my models. And because Rita Hayworth was so beautiful and so fiery, and Dietrich was so glamorous and sensuous, kind of dark at times, dramatic. Their names are legend. Garbo, Hayworth, Dietrich, Crawford. But what did these women possess? Magic, mystery. There was an awesome quality that was unreachable. They were bigger than the screen they played on. Garbo, Hayworth, certainly. Dietrich, uh, they had mystique about them. And I think that it had to do with the times, possibly. In those days, it was easier to be a goddess. And I think it's a timeless thing. Some have a timeless quality to them. And certainly the great glamour women do. Now we're in the world where you really want to go see somebody who looks like a pizza waitress in the movie, because she's real. And she's, we love Meryl Streep because she's real. That's not why people went to the movies. They went to go see somebody like Marlene Dietrich or Greta Garbo, who was unlike any human being you'd ever see in your life. They endure because those stars were created with the magic of hair, the magic of makeup, the magic of wardrobe, fashion, their fashion. They were the fashion. It is one of the things that I think is particularly great about, say, for instance, Cheetah Rivera on stage today is because she's not ordinary. And also, Cheetah is not somebody you see all the time. And you can only see Cheetah when you go to the theater. And when you see her on the stage, particularly in the, in the Dietrich, I call it the Dietrich number, she's bigger than life. And she is overwhelming. Dietrich, she could play that male-female thing, which is, I find, always exciting. Uh, because I do a number in a white tuxedo, and I, I like that. These other stars were, were legends, and it's that intangible thing that when they walk out on a stage, the whole stage lit up. They used to take a room. I remember being one time in a room when Lana Turner came in the room, and it was like, it truly was, I'd always heard about this, but it was like, a force of nature. In the old days when a star walked in a room, everything lit up. Everybody said, who is she? I don't remember anyone asking who anybody is today. Coming up next, another exclusive preview performance. Then the day after that. And later, a dancer's life on the road. We do it because we love it. You know, it's in our hearts. That's why we do it.
Welcome back to the Amazon for opening night of Kiss of the Spider Woman. I'm here with a very familiar face, Mr. John Lithgow from Third Rock from the Sun, of course. But also, you've had a tremendous background in Broadway yourself. Is this opening night exciting? Well, it's exciting for me. I never got to see Kiss of the Spider Woman on Broadway. And uh, Cheetah Rivera is a great old friend of mine, as she's a friend of just about everybody who works on Broadway. Uh, I worked with Cheetah. You know, there's a kind of demarcation between legit and musical theater in New York, and they don't cross over very often. But Cheetah and I were both in the Millican Fabric Industrial Show in 1974, and we've been great friends ever since. And was that a musical as well? It was a big musical review. I was in it to replace Tommy Toon. They needed somebody tall. <laughs> and could you kick up your legs like him? Not anymore. Because <laughs> Cheetah can still kick hers oh, up, you know, well above her head. She's a great force of nature. She's one of our national living treasures. Well, John, thank you very much for coming out tonight. Enjoy to the show. You, All right. To you. Back to you, Tani and Ron. Okay, thanks, Wendy. Actor Dorian Harewood is perhaps best known for his film and television roles. He played Jesse Owens in The Jesse Owens Story. You saw him in Roots, The Next Generation, Full Metal Jacket, Pacific Heights, and many more films. What you might not know is that, boy, can he sing. He's performed with The Four Tops, Stevie Wonder, and Gladys Knight. And right now, you're about to sample his vocal talents in this exclusive preview from The Kiss of the Spider Woman. Here's Dorian Harewood singing The Day After That. Someday we'll be free. I promise you we'll be free if not tomorrow. Then the day after that. And the candles in our hand will illuminate this land. If not tomorrow, then the day after that. And the world that gives us pain, that fills our lives with fear on the day after that, will disappear. And the war we fought to win, I promise you we will win. If not tomorrow, then the day after that, or the day after that. We'll be free, I promise you we'll be free. If not tomorrow, if not tomorrow, then the day after that, or the day after that. And the candles in our hand will make the land Voice. Uh, let's go backstage live where Dorian Harewood is getting ready to go out there and do that again tonight. Hi, Dorian. How you doing? Hi. Hi. Hi there. How are you? Good. Welcome home. You're home doing the show. Is that different for you? I'm ecstatic. I'm ecstatic. I'm, I'm very excited. I get up every morning now. I can take my kids to school, pick them up. I'm having a great time. It's It's been a very short tour, even though it seems like it's been a long time, but Dor I'm glad to be back. Dorian, i got to ask you a question. I should know better than this. I'm an actor. But I first saw you in Streamers years ago, and everybody knows you as a terrific, dramatic talent. Singing. I mean, everybody's so surprised by this. <laughs> what about it? How long have you been doing this? Well, you know, I was, I was talked into acting, Ron. Actually, uh, I, I started as a singer. I went to New York as a singer. And I was talked into acting by the legendary Be Betty Davis. I did a musical with her called Miss Moffat. Josh Logan directed it. And they talked me into trying dramatic acting. And when she heard her back, uh, the show closed prematurely. And I took her advice, and I got very busy acting. But I really miss singing. I'm glad to, glad to get back to it. You know, not everybody can name drop quite as well as that, Dorian. <laughs> Betty Davis, that's a good one. You get lots of points for that one. <laughs> I know, I know it really seems like it, but she, she really was my mentor. She's the one that talked me into doing this, the acting thing. 
I but now that you get, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I have a similar story about Lily and Gish, but I won't take time now. Go, go right ahead. <laughs> <laughs> but now you get to do something where you can combine two loves, the singing and the acting. It must make you doubly happy. Oh yeah, this is this is the best. I mean, it's so exciting. Live theater, first of all, and then to be able to, to combine the acting and the singing. I'd like to do some dancing, but uh, most of the dancers in the show have seen me dance, so they don't want me to do that. Uh, <laughs> what attracted you to this particular project? Well, first of all, first of all, Cheetah Rivera. Uh, just to work with her is, is, has been wonderful, and it was something I really wanted to do. So uh, when that happened, I just wanted to figure out a way to do it. And we worked out the schedule uh, in such a way that I wouldn't be away from my family too much. And uh, that basically was it. Okay, where do you go from here? I mean, it's L.A. until pretty much the end of April. Are you going to stay with the show past then? Yeah, we, uh, we finish here in L.A. and then we play a couple more cities and then, and then I think we go to Puerto Rico, uh, which is where Cheetah is going to be kind of holding court. I bet. <laughs> It'll be a lot of fun. I think that's where we're going to go. That's going to be the it. first time a, a touring show goes to Puerto Rico, isn't it? I think so. Yeah, and uh, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. But we've got a couple more cities after this. And, great. And it's going to be a lot of fun. Thanks, Dorian. Have a great time out there tonight. I saw you last night. It is a terrific show and you're fantastic in it. Thank like you. a leg. Thank Have you, a good Tony. show. Thank you. Thanks, Tony. Good Thanks, Ron. Bye-bye. I'm so scared. I don't know what to say to people anymore. Okay, we'll discuss that. When, <laughs> and maybe we'll have an answer. Right now, we're going to take a little break here. We'll be live back at the Amundsen for the big opening night of Kiss of the Spider Woman right after this. It is break a leg, right? Yes, it is. Okay, Thanks. thank you. Yeah. Told you we'd settle that. Okay, break All a right. leg, fine. Yes. Good. No Broadway show would survive without the people behind the scenes, the people who make the costumes, the sets, and create the special effects of lighting and sound. Our cameras went backstage recently to get an idea of what goes on before the actors hit the stage. Hi, I'm Robbie Young, one of the stage managers with Kiss of the Spider Woman, the national tour. And we are backstage, and I'd just like to show you around a little. This is our illustrious wardrobe department. They're just working all the time. I just see Todd doing repairs on uh, Molina's tux that is worn at the end of the show. They do repairs constantly. These are all of our, our, our swing costumes, all of the understudies, the dancer swings, the standbys. Um, and as you see, they're not, they're not the most of glamorous of clothes. Here's a, a bloody shirt that a uh, prisoner wears. No, it's not Friday the 13th. It's a Broadway musical. This is one of my favorite parts of wardrobe. Todd <laughs> has uh, acquired stickers from every city and bad tourist trap that we've ever been in. This is our Aurora poster, our very own Cheetah Rivera, depicted in her movie here. Forbidden Love. Other spider women have had different posters, obviously. This is Dan Toma, our sound man. Valentine and Melina, five, six, seven. Valentine and Melina. Five, six, seven. Actually, a couple nights ago, we uh, lost uh, Cheetah's mic during one of the performances. Uh, so we were down about uh, three, three minutes three, before one, two, getting three. it, getting something area back three. on her. The show being about old Hollywood and about movies, it has a real uh, cinematic feel to it, which the projections are crucial to. We have uh, 96 slides in the show. Uh, about half of them are backups, and I have to adapt them to every theater that we go into. They're a film stock, and uh, they're a 7x7 seven seven format. I think what's so interesting about the show is if you've seen it from the front, it looks so spectacular. It's so overwhelming. And then you get on stage, and it's a bare stage. This is our lovely chicken that uh, is a very specific prop in the show when you you'll when you see you'll understand this is a little appetizer of corn vomit this is where it all happens we have a script of the show and all of our light cues projection cues uh, automated scenery cues and let's go I love that shot. Wasn't that great? Cheetah up there on the spider web. But most of the time, she is on stage in the arms of her handsome, well-muscled male dancers. Recently, we spent the day with one young Canadian for whom dancing with Cheetah is truly living out a dream.
this is a really great show for all of us because we get featured. You know, people walk away remembering us and that's really, really great for us because uh, there isn't that many Broadway shows where there was like, the dancers get such great, great parts. To dance with Cheetah, it's a pretty magical experience. We, we have this, this thing, this energy that, that we share on stage and it all stems from her. I mean, uh, there are times where I'm really, really tired and I just look at her and I just get zapped. She's a legend to all of us that are in the show and uh, I, um, I wish I was around when she did West Side Story because I've always wanted to be her Bernardo and I've told her this. So um, I make the best of it when I dance with her every night. I have one lift that I do in the show um, with her that I take her up and then she flips over and, and she lands on me. And you know what? The thing about Cheetah is she's so consistent. I'm more afraid for myself than I am for her because I know she'll never, there, there, hasn't, there hasn't been one mishap yet. So, so, knock on wood. <laughs> doing a Broadway show is it's, it's physically demanding because you are doing repetitive movement eight times a week. No, it's not glamorous at all. <laughs> a lot of sweat and hard work. We do it because we love it, you know? It's in our hearts. That's why we do it. It's different than nine to five, I think. We're very lucky. Still ahead, another exclusive preview performance. again for another look at the show. Now, in addition to the two male leads, this song also features Lauren goler Kasarin, who plays Valentine's wife, and Merle Louise as Melina's mother. So now, here's another exclusive preview from Kiss of the Spider Woman. This one is Dear One. Dear one, nothing warm is denied me. Don't miss you inside me, dear one, dear one, say that over and over, keep repeating it as the hours, dear one, I don't see you crushing Opening night at the Amazon Theater, Kiss of the Spider Woman. I'm here with Mickey. I gotta tell you, are you are you as excited as everyone else is well, here for opening? Of course I am, because Cheetah Rivera is excitement within herself. Here is a uh, Tony Award winner, and uh, Darf Drabinsky. It's great production. It's got to be magnificent. Have you ever worked with Cheetah Rivera before, Mickey? No, I Mickey never Rivera? have. I've n I've never had the occasion to, or nor the. Uh, the delight of having worked with her, but she's got to be magnificent. Anybody that misses the show is going to probably miss one of the greatest performances in the world. My good friend Carol Lawrence did it also after Cheetah did it in New York. And of course, uh, Vanessa Brown. But the fact is that there's only one Cheetah Rivera. And we will both see her tonight. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank Mickey Rooney. Thank you very Rooney, much for having had me on. Here live at the Amazon. We'll be back after Thank this. You. Thank you so much.
obviously a good Catholic upbringing there. You Are we on? We're on. Oh, well, how do you like being shorter Are than you someone? Introduce yourself. I am with I'm renowned stage, screen, and television actor Jack Carter. <laughs> Jack Michelle Carter, and she just was under Lithgow. It was, it was a building. John Lithgow is a tall man. He's a tall man. Listen, you started your career with Sheeta Rivera. Sheeta Rivera, we gave her. Uh, she literally, we were at the audition and all. Sammy Davis and I. I co-starred with her, Mr. Wonderful, and she was fantastic. She walked in did a big audition and nailed the job. And her biggest number we left in Philadelphia. She had another number called Jamaica. I don't think Sammy's uncle liked that number too much. It was, it was a showstopper. Ooh, we like those. Okay. And we her other big number, Too Close for Comfort, that came in the day before we opened in New York. And you expect her kicks to be just as high tonight for oh, Kiss the Spider Woman. Fantastic. Thanks God for being you. here, okay. Jack London. Back to you, Tony. Bye. Jack Carter. What did she say? Jack London wrote some wonderful books, yes, Wendy, but I don't think he's here tonight. But do you know who is? Jack Carter's nickname, though, is White <laughs> Fang. Be. That's and why they got confused. There, you see, there's the tie-in. Lonnie Anderson is here Hello. joining us. Hi, how are you? You look just so spectacular. Thank you. Is she gorgeous or what? Are you oh, taking oh, are you taking credit for no, this? No, no. no. <laughs> he better not. No. I called him my good buddy earlier, and I'm still trying to live that down. He's not sure what that meant. Anyway, what brings you out here tonight, Lonnie? Oh, first of all, my love of theater. I, I started I started in musical theater, and it's my passion, and I love it. And to see Cheetah Rivera in person. I mean, I've seen her on television. I've tried to get into other shows that she's been in, and I'm actually going to see her tonight, and it's a thrill. She's a legend. Did you have trouble getting tickets? Why couldn't you get into the other show? <laughs> it's usually when I was a poor, oh, oh, starving, pounding the pavement actress. It oh, was We could help you out yes, with tickets. Yes, in New York, if, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I know. What are we going to do? I know. But he's cute. <laughs> I don't know what to do, except to, maybe we should just, would you two like to chat for a while and, and I'll just do this? The composing team of John Kander, it oh, says to and you, Fred you... Ebb, yes, I got excited. <laughs> yeah. I've had a glittering career on Broadway, famous for shows like Cabaret and the song, which has just about become an anthem of New York City, New York, New York. You want to do this one? No, I, oh, yes. Ah, oh, we talked with Kiss of the Spider Woman's musical director, Rob... Bowman, about the score that turned a tragic drama into a dazzling Broadway musical. Indeed. What I love about Kiss of the Spider Woman is, I think the big picture is, is that of an opera. Uh, it's very grand, it's very classical, it's very symphonic, yet when you break it down, you've got all of this fiery Latin America music, and it does combine pop styles with classical styles in a way that is completely powerful and exciting and different for Broadway audiences today. One of the most beautiful melodies in the show, and I think the song that people go away with the most, is Dear One. And you listen to the melody, uh, and, and when, when you have these vocalists singing it, it Dear One, la -da 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 -da. you know, very, very cantabile. And you, I think the listener will go sit back and listen and go, wow, that's really pretty. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The lyrics are, dear one, I don't think about you. I do nicely without you. So it's, it's these tough pills to swallow under the, you know, on top of this bed of beauty. That's, I think, what always John and Fred always like to do. I found it intriguing. I love the uh, contrast that offered us between um, the life of two men in a cell, a prison cell, which is by its nature sort of grungy and depressing and down and the world into which he escapes one of the men in order to um, alleviate some of the pain of his situation i i have to honestly say that i am one of john kander and fred ebbs probably one of their biggest fans i grew up with the music of zorba and cabaret and chicago and uh, it was the music i played by ear and it, when I would get to the piano, uh, it was their music that I always tended to want to play. And the opportunity to get to work with them years later was just a, a dream. <laughs> the, musically, it's, it's always a challenge to keep it fresh and exciting. I hear the orchestrations and I see Cheetah and I see the rest of the people on the stage really going for it and I'm lifted. It's hard to avoid the energy that, that starts to take place once uh, the curtain goes up. Back here on opening night again at Kiss of the Spider Woman, I'm here with James and Paula Coburn. Are you a fan of Cheetah Rivera? Absolutely. She's a, uh, well, what can you say about Cheetah? She's always been great, always. You know, I have to ask you, having done so much film work yourself, how do you think this film would translate to musical theater? 
Well, you wouldn't think it would, but I, th I, I thought that it'd be an absolute natural because of the style of the play or of the movie. I mean, it had the, the, all the elements of fantasy in it. The music was, you know, generally considered fantasy land. It should be wonderful yeah, to see. Now, have you guys seen the show on Broadway at all? No, yeah. we haven't seen it. We haven't first. Seen it. Yeah. Well, please enjoy yourselves tonight. Paula's, Paula's favorite outing is a play with music or Absolutely. a musical. A musical, I love yeah. it. You got it all tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Back to you, Tommy. No, you're, okay, you're Wendy, great. I'm going to have to interrupt these old friends chatting with each other. Betty White has joined us. Welcome, Betty. Welcome. Are you going to let yourself be seen like that? I, Isn't he? I already have. It's too late. <laughs> she needed something to match the mic. That's, that's so what she we did. Pulled out something. Or the rock. Or the rock. Uh -huh. Well, that's another story entirely. Don't you have a question for Betty? I, I do. Yes. Well, I could ask why she's here, but it's to see Kiss of the Spider Woman. Are you a friend of Cheetah's? Do you two know oh, each other? Oh, I mean, it's a wonderful show, but Cheetah is, I would follow her anywhere. We have my husband, Alan Ludden, and I used to follow her wherever she went. She is something special. Well, we better let you go because I know they're trying to get everybody inside, but thanks for chatting with us. Have a wonderful time tonight. It's great to see you. I will, Tony, dear. Throw something over it so it doesn't look so bad. Would you get <laughs> nice to see you? Thank you. Good to see you, Betty. Bye-bye. Thanks. Buddy. Okay, well, it's time to hear a little more of the music of Candor and Ebb as we bring you another exclusive preview performance. Here's Cheetah Rivera and Juan Chiron dancing a sensuous tango to the song Only in the Movies. <laughs> We're glad you could join us tonight for Kiss of the Spider Woman opening night live. Please join me Monday the 25th for a listen to this title, Tawny Little, live from the Academy Awards. We'll be here at 5 o'clock live to bring you all of the pre-Oscar excitement. Stay tuned now for a special presentation of the award-winning film, Kiss of the Spider Woman, starring William Hurt and Raul Julia. We want to thank Wendy Walsh for helping us out tonight, and of course, Ron, good buddy, dear friend. Was we'll a discuss pleasure. what Anything you should be called buddy. later. Anything for a buddy. <laughs> And thank you for watching. Good night.